Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk a lot about the theory for differential equations and how we can use it for applications. Indeed, in today's part 24, we will talk about solving a linear differential equation. And for that, we will use what we have already discussed, namely the connection between a system of ODEs and an ODE of higher order. However, in this video we will keep it simple and only talk about autonomous ODEs. And you also already know, before we start with the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. This is important because your support makes it possible that I can create such math videos. And as a thank you, you find a lot of additional material with the link in the description. And then without further ado, let's immediately start by recalling what we already know about a system of linear ODEs. And to be precise, what we actually want to consider here is an explicit ODE, which is also homogeneous and autonomous. This implies that we can always write our system in this compact form, x dot is equal to ax, where a is an n times n matrix. So it's an n-dimensional system and we already know the whole solution set of it. Namely, all solutions are simply found in the matrix exponential e to the power t times a. This means any solution we could have is simply a map that sends t to this matrix times an n-dimensional vector we could call x0. Therefore we could just say that the columns of the matrix exponential just span the whole solution set for our ODE. Moreover, we also know from the last video that the matrix exponential is easy to calculate if we have enough eigenvectors of A. Indeed, the best case scenario we find if A is a diagonalizable matrix. And this case we definitely have if A has n different eigenvalues. In fact, this is a very important result from linear algebra. If you calculate the eigenvalues and you find n different ones, then the matrix is diagonalizable. And for this video here, let's call the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on. Okay, so in this case we can easily calculate our matrix exponential and then we can also form the whole solution space of the system. And now we can use this nice result to also talk about the solution set of linear ODEs of order n. This simply means that besides the first derivative, we can also have higher order derivatives inside the ODE. But still, everything should be linear and homogeneous and also autonomous. And then the general expression of such an ODE is simply given by xn, so simply the nth derivative, plus the next lower derivative, which is n minus 1, but with a coefficient in front, which we could call a n minus 1. And then you see we can continue like that until we reach the first derivative again. And for this one we have the coefficient a1, but we also have the coefficient a0. Simply because for an ODE also the function itself can come in. However, since we want to stay homogeneous, we don't have any constant term, so we have a 0 on the right hand side. And moreover, since all coefficients are just real numbers and they don't depend on t, we have an autonomous ODE. In fact, this whole description here is definitely a general description of a linear ODE of order n, which is homogeneous and autonomous. And now the question is simply, what is the general solution for that one? And to answer that, you should recall what we did at the beginning of the course, namely in part 4, there we transformed every higher order ODE into a system of first order. This always works because it's just a substitution where we use new variable names. Indeed, these new variables could be called y1, y2 and so on. And now you just have to remember that they represent the derivatives of the function x. In that sense, y1 stands for x itself, y2 stands for the first derivative, and then finally yn is the derivative of x of order n minus 1. And this implies that the first derivative of yn is exactly the nth derivative of x. Hence we can rewrite the ODE as a first derivative in yn. 
It simply means that we have to bring everything to the right hand side here. So first we have a n minus 1 with a minus sign in front and then we can multiply with y n. So you see instead of the derivatives of x we can just use our new variable names y. This means at the end here we have a1 times y2 minus a0 times y1. So now by using your linear algebra training you should immediately see that this is just a matrix vector multiplication. This means our first order system with the variable y is also a linear one. Namely we can just consider y dot which is the derivative in each component. Hence the last component here is actually the interesting one. Indeed the other ones don't do so much because for example if you consider the derivative of y1 then you get the derivative of x which is y2. In other words for the first n minus 1 entries we will just increase the index. So the second last entry will be yn. And please don't forget the last one here is already represented as a linear combination in the variable y. Therefore we can easily rewrite this whole result as a matrix vector multiplication. There in the first row of the matrix we have 0, then 1 and then 0 again. And obviously the second row looks similar because we just have to shift the 1, 1. Now if that already looks strange please don't forget we want to multiply with our vector y from the right hand side. Then it should be clear because the matrix or the row of the matrix is put to the column in the standard matrix multiplication. Hence everything is quite clear until we reach the last row. Because in the last row we actually have to use our equation here so also the coefficients a0, a1 and so on. And most importantly you should see that minus a0 belongs to y1 so we start with that. And then it's quite clear how we continue. We have minus a1 then minus a2 and so on. So don't forget the last entry we get in the matrix is minus a n minus 1. And now we have it. This is exactly our matrix a we want to consider in the following. Indeed now we simply have y dot is equal to a times y. So this means we don't have any problems solving this system and then we immediately get a solution or all the solutions of our linear order E of order n. And as we already discussed it above, the key for all the solutions is calculating e to the power t a. Which means we really have to calculate the eigenvalues of a. And there again we have to use our linear algebra knowledge Namely, the eigenvalues are exactly the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. And exactly this is the reason why we have a characteristic polynomial for ODEs as well. It's simply the standard characteristic polynomial for our given matrix A. Hence it's the determinant of A minus lambda the identity matrix. And now you might already guess that in this case we can actually calculate this determinant in general. In fact it's just using the Laplace expansion formula together with a standard induction. Hence I would suggest that you start with a low dimensional case like 2 or 3 and then verify the following formula. We have minus 1 to the power n in front but this is not important because then we have our polynomial in lambda. And there it turns out that the powers of lambda perfectly fit with our indices of the coefficients a n. So more precisely here we have lambda to the power n minus 1 and the coefficient a n minus 1 in front. And this continues until we have a1 times lambda to the power 1 plus the last coefficient a0 times lambda to the power 0. So there we have it. This is our characteristic polynomial of a and you can prove this formula as I said just by an induction and by using Laplace's expansion formula. And now since we are only interested in the zeros of the characteristic polynomial anyway, we usually would omit this coefficient in front. This means the second factor here is what we usually call the characteristic polynomial of the ODE. And there I would say this is really easy to remember because our ODE looks exactly the same. So as a reminder our ODE looked like that. So instead of the function x we have lambda and the power is exactly the degree of the derivative. Namely for x we just have the power 0. 
Now another useful way to remember this nice formula is to use an approach. This just means that one tests a potential solution, namely an exponential function. So this one you just put into our ODE and then you see with the derivatives we exactly get out our characteristic polynomial. And again, then we just search for the zeros of it because we want to talk about the eigenvalues of a. And there you might remember the best case scenario as we have discussed it at the beginning, namely it could happen that we find n different eigenvalues for a. And at the moment let's assume that we find all the eigenvalues in the real numbers. So we don't go into the complex realm yet because it makes it more complicated. Okay, now in this case we already know everything, namely we know that the matrix A is diagonalizable. This means we can transform A into a diagonal matrix where we find the eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n on the diagonal. And therefore inside the matrix exponential we find entries like e to the power lambda 1 times t. And then if we multiply this function by a vector which has the powers of lambda 1 inside, we find a solution of our first order system. Indeed, this is not hard to check at all because you can just put it into the equation above. And then obviously we can also repeat the same thing for the other eigenvalues as well. Hence what we get with the span is an n-dimensional solution space. So in summary, we find the general solution of our n-dimensional system y dot is equal to a times y. And now you should recall how we translated the original system because we want to find the solution with the variable x. And there we see we just have to take the first entry in the vector to get the solution x. This means our n-dimensional solution space of our original ODE of order n is not so complicated. In short we can just say it's spanned by n different exponential functions. Obviously this is an important result because it tells us that the general solution is just a linear combination of exponential functions. However, as we have already discussed, this nice result only works if we have enough eigenvalues. In the moment that the matrix A is not diagonalizable over the real numbers anymore, a lot of things change. On the other hand, calculating the zeros of the characteristic polynomial stays exactly the same. This means when you have such a linear ODE, you always go to the characteristic polynomial first and find all the zeros. And then you have to decide if this case is applicable, otherwise we have to discuss more cases first. But obviously this is a huge topic for the next videos. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.